All right, we call this Cattle Parish Commission Work Session meeting to order. May we have a roll call, please? Dominic. Hope. McCall. Pearson. Lynn. Present. Jenkins. Present. Baker. Here. Lynch. Here. Escobar. Here. Thibodeau. Fox. Yo. Smith. Here. Epperson. Here. Madam Quorum, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. If we would uh, rise to the prayer now. Ms. <laughs> uh, Lynch will lead us in the prayer. And Mr. Cox in place. For the trial, yes, please. Father God, we come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, you God, for your grace and your mercy. Thanking you for how you have protected us and kept our minds stayed on you. We pray that you will continue to guide us in your word. Give us wisdom and understanding in how to lead your people. We pray for all of our elected officials across this country, God, and we pray for the citizens of Cattle Parish and the administration and all that are under your care and that carry your name. And we pray for our troops at home and, at, and abroad, God, that you will continue to protect them and to bring them home safely. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Please face the flag and pray after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> All right, uh, agenda additions, Mr. Smith. <laughs> I'd like to add uh, the uh, adjudicated property uh, ordinance 5021 to uh, today's agenda to be approved on Thursday. Thank you. The uh, three or we're going to get it in motion immediately. Okay. Uh, it's been moved by Commissioner Smith and seconded by Commissioner Jenkins that we put the um, adjudicated property fee ordinance for vote Thursday. Is there any discussion on that motion? Everyone in favor, <coughs> please vote. Everybody voted. Okay, that passes. State your ordinance. And the ordinance will be changed. Uh, the only change on it is going from five hundred to three hundred dollars for the fee, and uh, the extra hundred dollars will be dedicated to promoting the adjudicated property sales uh, from that one hundred dollars. So it'll be it'll go from how much? From we're dropping it from five hundred to three hundred, oh. which is one hundred dollar increase. But the hundred dollar increase will be dedicated toward selling the adjudicated property. Okay. It's been uh, moved that uh, we uh, move the ordinance forward for final approval Thursday with the amendment that the fee be increased from 300, uh, from, sorry, from 200 to 300, with $100 of that dedicated to promoting uh, parish-wide the uh, new rules and regulations with regards to the ease of acquiring adjudicated property. We move by Mr. Jenkins. Any discussion on that motion? Sure. Yeah, I just want to uh, thank my colleagues for your consideration uh, on that ordinance. Um, and ultimately, our, our goal is to get properties back on the tax roll and for it not to be uh, to be as business friendly and investor friendly as possible. And thank you all for your consideration on it. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other discussion? Please vote. <coughs> that moves forward. Okay, uh, any, uh, Mr. Jenkins, do you have any business? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I have two. I'd like to, to make a motion. One at a time, please. I'd like to make a motion to uh, expand today's agenda to include a, the authorization of a uh, resolution for Mr. Frederick Wells, owner of Wells Office Supply, for 50 years of continuous business in Cattle Parish. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Commissioner Jenkins and seconded by Commissioner Dominic that he'd be allowed to bring up an order of new business regarding. <coughs> A resolution of acknowledgement to Wells Office Supply. Um, any discussion on that motion? Vote to allow that to be brought up, please. That passes. I'd like to make a motion, Mr. President, to uh, expand today's agenda, include authorization for a resolution for Ms. Maddie McCullough for humanitarian efforts with special needs children in Cattle Parish, Louisiana. Second. 
Okay, it's been moved by Commissioner Jenkins and seconded by Commissioner Dominic that the agenda be expanded to allow the introduction of a resolution honoring the works of Ms. Maddie McCulloch. Is there any discussion on that motion? All right, folks are allowed to bring it up. Okay, you're allowed that. Now we will need to vote on both of the motions to move them to Thursday. We can do that simultaneously. I'll entertain a motion to move both of those resolutions to Thursday. So moved by second by Commissioner Jenkins, seconded <coughs> by Commissioner Dominic to move these two resolutions to Thursday's business. Is there any discussion on that motion? Please vote. <coughs> that passes. Any other new business? Okay. Uh, Next, we have citizens' comments. Is there anyone here who would like to address the commission that's not on the agenda or on any matter that's not on our agenda today? There is none. Being none, we'll move to reports. We have the administration's report. Mr. Wilson? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, commissioners. President, yesterday, uh, we, we have uh, a couple of items. We have uh, two of our engineer uh, energy consultants for us today, Mr. Bruce Hoffman and Mr. Jeff Weir. Will be giving us a little brief update on the hero program i met with them last week and i thought that you got interested in what they have to say today so i asked them to give you uh, a brief presentation i did warn them about the trap door at the uh, at the podium but they went beyond 15 minutes and they're going to disappear so they are aware of that time so i'd like them to come forward this time if you would mr bruce sure. and with the, that's these handouts yes that's these handouts all that i've been passing out concerning this I appreciate the opportunity to uh, address the uh, council and um, um, this is I'm the energy efficiency consultant for, for the parish and one of the things that we've been doing is working with the state in trying to devise programs that would help the citizens of the parish of uh, Caddo and one of the things that I expressed to Mr. Wilson that one of the best kept secrets in the state is called the HERO program and that's the, um, that's the home energy rebate I'm talking about. And the HERO program is, is funded in part uh, by the stimulus funds, the ARRA. And the state has $15 million to give out cash rebates for homes and small businesses. So that's what we want to talk about today. But in addition to that, uh, to get into the program, you have to have an audit. And the USDA has funds available, especially for parishes like Caddo, to help citizens fund these audits. And then the third thing is that we have some opportunities to help with the parish buildings in seeing how they become energy efficiency through the Department of Energy at no cost to the parish. But today what we want to do is focus in on this uh, HERO program. The HERO program is a rebate program that has been in existence for quite a while for the state of Louisiana. Um, since 1999, they've been trying to get people to become more energy efficient. In the past, they had a $2,000 rebate, and it was pretty cumbersome to, to get that money. In May of this year, they raised it to $3,000 for existing homes. And typically what that does is, like, if you have to get your air conditioning replaced, um, your, your contractors in the parish should know about this. And this is something that they can capture. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cost effective way. It would cost them a couple of hundred dollars to get the audit, but then they would receive $3,000 cash back from the state. Um, one of the things, it's not just to change your air conditioner in your home, but what the, the, the auditors do, they came, come out and they actually do what they call a blower door test. They're gonna test your home for any leaks uh, through the windows, through your uh, doors, through your attics and floors. And what they would recommend is how you seal those leaks. Because a lot of times about 30 or 40% of your air conditioner and the heating goes out of your house through those leaks. So this is a program to identify those leaks and also to weatherize your home so you can, you know, uh, become tight. The other thing they do, and this is, this is a scientific fact, about 40% of the heating and air conditioning is lost through leaky ductwork. So the other thing they do is what they call a, a, a duct testing. 
they'll come to a buck blaster and they'll see how if you are leaking in your ducting system and they'll recommend replacing that or sealing it up so the, the program basically is the citizens have to become aware of this program and it's not well advertised um, Shaw is the um, consultant for the state they're the energy state consultant they are trying to get this program out in, in the state, and that's why I'm here today, is, is see how we can work with the parish to get the parish to understand that it's good for the citizens, it's, it's basically free money. Um, they have to go through a couple of steps. But it's a, it's a good program, and what they would do is they would come in, an energy auditor, and you have three energy auditors here in the, in the city of uh, Freeport, Parish Gatto. They would come out and they would do a baseline evaluation of your house. They would score your house, and they would tell you how you would increase your score. On the screen up here, it has an example of a, um, they call it a hurricane rating. Before the improvements, this one here has 223 points. And then after the improvements, they have 149 points. And then this, this particular example, this house would actually save $975 per year. And the report they, they would send into the state would identify everything that they were doing. The HERO program leaders would come out and they would do a post evaluation. They would score you, they would send that into the state and the state would send you $3,000. In addition to that, the $3,000 is from the state, but if you do other energy improvements and you follow the federal guidelines, you'd be available for $1,500. So if you are replacing your air conditioner along with carpeting your windows and things like that, your cost may be $7,000, $10,000, and this is $3,000 to $4,500 that you could put in your pocket. And that's, that's what the HERO program is all about. Let me ask you a question. Yes, the, uh, the, uh, this is uh, government money, federal money. The three thousand dollars from the state is that in? Uh, are these in forms of tax credits or the direct check no, to the consumer? This is cash. And the federal is that a tax credit or is that a, a check from the federal government? That's the, the fifteen hundred dollars is a tax credit. It's tax credit and the state money is is cash. Cash, right? Thank and Shaw sure has fifteen million dollars. That's one of the problems that they have with the Hero program before that they did they were running out of money to get the rebates. But they have $15 million and they have to do 7,500 audits in between now and, and I think it's April of 2012. They only have, they only have a 900 done. So they're way behind getting these audits taken care of. Now that $3,000 that I mentioned is for existing households because that's the majority of what is taking place. There's two other rebates that are also available. One is for new construction new construction they're available for two thousand dollar rebate and basically what you're doing there is when you're building the house the home builder the contractor if he increased the the efficiency of the air conditioning or did more insulation or sealed it better he would be eligible for that two thousand dollar rebate in addition to that small commercial rebates are up to five thousand dollars this is something that really needs to be expressed in the community because the, the ragers that we're talking to here in this area, they said that small commercial build, the small commercial owners, typically what they do is they replace their lighting. Lighting is one of your, your uh, uh, inefficient uh, energy consumers. <laughs> and if you replace your lighting fe fe features and reduce your energy consumption, typically it costs less than $5,000 to do that. And in their, in their expression to us is that a lot of small businesses, they'll come out and do their audit. They'll say, okay, your lighting's bad. You know, we can change your lighting. It usually costs maybe two or $3,000 to change your lighting. They'll go ahead and pay for that. They'll fill out the forms and then they'll get a $5,000 um, cash. So that's something that is gone unnoticed and, and unused. So it's something that, that is available right now for you, for your citizens, for your small businesses, for your existing homes, and for your new homes. That state? Excuse me? Is that 5,000 on the state, or is that from the federal government? Theory? No, that's, that's from the state. The, the federal government gave the state 
$15 million. I understand. I just want to know if that was, you know, for this program. Okay, that's that's what this money is for. And the state has to spend that $15 million between now and April 2012. That's a lot of money to spend at $3,000, $5,000. $5, so, the commercial is just is new, or is it all No, commercials and any commercial. Small commercials. It has to be less than 10,000 square feet. New and existing. Yes, ma'am. It has to be less than 10,000 square feet. Okay. But I mean, like a strip <laughs> store, a grocery store, or something like that, that they are all eligible for that. The reason all this thing was unperforming is because a lot of people would call up an energy auditor and, and they would say, well, it's going to cost you two, three, four hundred dollars to get your initial energy audit. And then you would have a subsequent audit to confirm what you did. And that, so your out of pocket would be like four to seven hundred fifty dollars. And a lot of times that's unaffordable for some people, even though they still get three thousand dollars. I'm specifically talking about existing homes. The other problem that they have is that y'all don't know about it. A lot of people do not know about this program. A lot of education has to go in. A lot of media, a lot of confirmation that this program does exist. It is workable and it is friendly. Um, that's something that that we should do in the city, mm -hmm. in the parish of, 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 of Canada. We should promote this because it's good for the people, it's good for the citizens, and it's good for your constituents. I mean, if you can bring your constituents $2,000, $3,000, $5,000, I think they're going to be very appreciative. Um, that's one of the big things, global awareness. Um, some of the things that we can do as a consultant and, and for the city is help organize these these educational output, organized meetings with the local contractors, the HVAC contractors, the contract, the building contractors, um, put together the raters and have them get more information out to the community and do newsletters, uh, webinars, things of that nature. One of the things that you guys have at your advantage is you have some of your gas companies that are bringing in oil and gas revenues. A lot of these companies like to contribute to programs that work. If they could contribute some money to this program, you could start establishing some financial guidelines to help offset the cost for, for loans, for instance. So those are some of the other things that we can do to help promote this program. One of the big things is endorsements from the, from the parish. Uh, we can get Shaw, we can get the state, um, to work with you to, I'm just the messenger, to give you all the facts and, inf and information on this. You do have packets, and that's the program that's directly from, from the state. And I think that's about all the information I have. Oh, the USDA does have a program for residents in rural communities, and they can apply for grants to offset the cost of those audits that we just talked about. That's another thing that's available to your citizens today. And then I guess the last thing we want to mention is that um, there's a program right now from the uh, USDOE Gulf Coast Clean Energy Program, and it's a free program to help you evaluate your buildings to see how you become energy efficient, and that's at no cost to you. So I think that's it. That's good, Bruce. Fair enough? Yes, sir. Thank you, Ms. Okay. Do you remember Commissioner Lynch? Oh. <laughs> I <done>. like that. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, yeah, good yeah, time. Yeah, do that again. He said Commissioner Lynch, and then that just went off like that. I like that. That was a pro. <laughs> 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 Let's see what kind of question you're going to get now. Oh, God. <laughs> now, I'm a little confused. I'm going to tell you. Uh, 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 always. Always. <laughs> always. That's what I mean. Um, uh, this is a lot of information for me to digest. Well, you, I just gave you the overview, so you don't need to digest it all. Okay. Um, I just kind of like to get this kind of information in, in a committee setting for me to, to kind of go through it and, and, and get my questions together. But I guess my question is more for, for Woody. That are we are we going to do this, or is this, I mean, what, what is, he, are, is he proposing? to do this or is this something we're already doing or what? 
It's been my Bruce is proposing that well, we brought this to our attention last week, Thursday, and we are going to engage in some of these activities. And we want you all to be aware of it because a lot of it is public information. And what Bruce brought today, we can put on our website. But we need to figure out a way to promote it to the constituency so they can know if it's available. And the free energy audit on the bills, we will take advantage of that. Yes, we will. Yeah. Okay, so mention good. to, uh, to uh, Commissioner Lynch and your task force that, that we can meet with them, with you, to kind of help you get information. Yeah, and I, I'm not sure if they're that far along to, to, to do it because this is immediate. This is going on now. Right. And I'm it's aware of some right of this. Yes, yeah, I am aware of some of it. Um, and I guess my question is, um, I guess I just need to see a comprehensive plan on how it's going to be rolled out if we're, you know, if we're going to do it. But the, you're talking about the Hero program? Yeah. The Hero program is already in existence. Right, I understand what I'm saying. How will it be implemented in Cattle Parish? You know, step, step, you know, what, how are we going to do it? You talked about the education piece. Well, I can get, I can, I can come up with the blueprint for that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because that basically, you know, it just incorporated in your, in your. Right. And how would it be, how would that information get out to, you know, the commercial and to the residential? <coughs> How, how are you proposing that be done? I guess is what I'm looking for. The implementation. There's a number phase. of ways. I mean, you have television commercials. I think you have public service announcements. I think you uh, have meetings. I think your newspaper even records some of the things you do at a conference meeting. Yeah. Um, outlets yeah. like that. Y'all have like a you know timeline. The first three months, or the first 90 days, or 60 days. Or well, I, I guess I'm just. We're talking about the first three days. We can do that. Okay. Yeah, this is available right now. To, to move forward, but I'll get with, I'll be right, back I'll up move. next week too with Woody and, and Randy and go over the details and how we can roll it out. Okay. As you as you were describing. Okay. But this is available right now. This is not something that you need to put any money on. This isn't something that you have to vote on. This is just information for you to know that this is available for your constituents too. Right. And we need to uh, well, let me say I need to understand it because. You know, as we're going to meetings and that type of thing, you need to be able to say, this is what we're doing, and this is how we're going to do it, and this is when we're going to do it. And I we, just, I just want to be clear I think what would be very beneficial for you also is, uh, I've been working with Shaw and the state, we have like a, a tri-fold, mm -hmm. a color, a glossy color type thing, and I can get that for everybody. And, okay. You know, you get it for the whole parish, and yeah. that'll help. That'll work. And then that way, when you go to these meetings, it'll be very concise and won't be like my presentation. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. And so you're 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 still the energy efficiency consultant for the parish. Yes, yes. Okay, so that wasn't limited to the courthouse deal. That's yes. just overall. For all all initiatives that had to do with the uh, stimulus, with the stimulus or whatever, this is our guy. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, okay I, I think that probably a good approach is um, this is public information. He's just basically telling us. Uh, you know, he's dropping the baby in our lap. We need to get it out. Right. I think the times would be once we get a simplified presentation of this, the times we'd want to put it in their living section because they're always having green articles in there. I think that the major news networks here, 3, 12, 7, will we'll do a piece. They're always looking for pieces to do. They can put that on their news. The forum should give us an article on it. I mean, it's just, this is more of a public service announcement thing than anything. Not a political agenda, so I think we can get all the free publicity. We just have to have a compact presentation and go out there and ask them. If you need help doing that, I'll be happy to help you do that. Mm -hmm. And as we do Stephanie that. said, as I'll we speak to, to our local group, I've got to speak to Captain Street Neighborhood Association a week or two. They don't they don't meet, but four times a year, so it's always a good crowd just to let them know. But it's more of a public information thing, and I don't think much trouble getting the ball kicked. Put it on our website, The Times, all KTBS. They'll link it under their websites. Uh, you know, it's not going to be hard to do. Next, we have Commissioner Cox. Uh, in March of next year, uh, have y'all done trade shows or green shows? No, I mean, we participated in them, but yeah, this okay, is, this before is you leave, I'd like to get your number. I guess it's on here. No, it's not, but William and Randy know how to get okay. in touch I'm with doing an uh, expo next March in Red River Parish. Sure. It's going green in Red River. And I'd like to talk to you about setting up something that day. Absolutely. In Red River Parish. Yes, sir. And initially, somebody pays their money. How soon is it before they get their refund? 
that, that's a timetable in there, but would say, for instance, you call today to get your energy rater, yes. he would come in and do <coughs> your audit, and it takes about an hour or two to do an audit. Right. And then you would get the contractors in to do the implementation. Yeah. Then they come back in and do the post audit. <laughs> and once they do the post audit, they send that into the state, and the state, that's saying immediately, yeah. I'll say two weeks, they will send you your check for $3,000. Thanks, sir. <laughs> That'll go and take a little longer. <clears throat> I'll, I'll be in touch with you about the uh, trade show because we have a green expo here every year, and this is a new one going in. Great. We'd love to be participants. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Dominic. Uh, just a couple of questions. Uh, um, LPB, have, have they been approached to Louisiana Public Broadcasting about doing some PSAs on this? No, sir. No, this is, this is uh, you know, with Woody and Randall. I'm just saying yeah. through the whole state that that might be an idea. That would be great. Um, the second thing, uh, if, they, if someone comes up an energy audit and they say you need to do A, B, and C, and D mm -hmm. to make your house or your business more energy efficient, does that person or business have to do A, B, C, and D, or can they just do A? No, that's that, the that, was, that was one of the problems with the earlier program. Yeah. You had to do A, B, C, and D. Now it's a, it's just a. I think you saw the one that had a score on it, right? If you get a thirty percent better score, you get your rebate. Okay. So it's like if they say you got to replace your air conditioning, you got to increase your insulation, you got to caulk your windows, and you got to put uh, draft reducers under your door. But you could almost get a air conditioning free. I mean, this oh, absolutely. Pretty good deal. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like say after that, your outside condenser is bad, but the inside units are good. The outside condenser sometimes costs twenty five hundred dollars. How much paperwork is it? I mean, how much paperwork? You don't have to do the paperwork. Do what? You don't have to do the paperwork. The hero later does all the paperwork. My question is done. Commissioner Smith, I called uh, on the hero program two weeks ago, and then they came back and said the phones are out. So I don't know if I got the right Who location. Did you call? I don't know. I'd have to go back to my office and find out. Who's because uh, I'll get a good program, and I'll. I'll Really want to take advantage of it. If so you, if you want me to get in time, I'll, I'll get through Woody, and I'll get you your card here. So I'll get in contact with you. Sure. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. I, I'm not a hero writer. Okay. I'll, I'm your energy efficiency consultant. Okay. But I am working with the state and working with Shaw, and if that is the response that you're getting right now, then I'll make sure that the state starts <coughs> doing it better. I'll, I'll be back to you. This is Thank important you. to us. Okay. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Baker. Uh, I just wanted to ask, so the, our constituents, they can apply directly? They don't have to go through you all or anybody? They can just apply directly themselves? They, they have to have, a, a HERO rate is certified. It's, it's called a resident certification. They have to get trained and certified through the federal program. So, and there's, there's very few of them. They have, they have three of them in this area that are available to do that right now. That information is in one of these packets on yes, how they get trained. And then once they get trained, then they can apply themselves for whatever needs that they have. Amen. If you get trained, then you become a ResNet certified hero rater. Then you can go out and do the ratings like these other gentlemen are doing, these other people are doing. That's all that's for. No, I'm talking about house. if someone wanted to get some work done or get like a new get an energy a survey and then right. get, maybe they're so they have to get trained to go out oh no, that's, what I'm, that's, that's what i'm asking yeah no all you have to do is call up the hero waiter so you can you can get the information to me and i'll get it to them okay. and then they would come all your constituents if you want to list the constituents mm -hmm. we'd get the hero waiters to go out to them and explain the whole program to them that's what i'm talking yes, so yeah they don't have to go through anybody else they yeah, can no, they can actually you apply themselves correct it's nothing that we have to do no that. no you don't have to do anything okay no. good no okay. they can pick up the phone and call up i think they have an 800 number okay and you said there was a cost associated with that not the call no There's no a cost no. associated with the audit yes ma'am okay now now the again the usda has a program mm -hmm. in the parish in the rural parishes to offset that cost and we're working with some financial institutes. That's why we want to talk to some of the gas companies to set up some financial programs with your bank. So that's a part of the implementation. And I know I'm out of order, Mr. President. Thank you. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> over. Dominique's whispering in my ear and they threw me You're going to be out of order. Get on with uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> Get on it. Over. Get on it. But anyway. <laughs> How much is the, how much does an audit normally cost? An audit, two three hundred dollars. Oh, okay. And so the 
the offset program is, is is the financial institutions kicking in? Is that a part of our implementation? Is that going to be a part of yeah, that's offering what, that? That's what we're going to start working on. Is is working with your financial what institutions is here in the parish, right. you know, to see if they'll cooperate with these programs. So a homeowner basically can get a contract or get the hero rater. They can call up or go online, get their website, <laughs> and take care of it. And then hopefully it wouldn't be any cost out of pocket you for the now some That's not there yet. But some <laughs> counties, I think, are are putting in money to do that. Correct. Some parishes maybe Correct. in South Louisiana. And then um, and some are using the funds from the from the financial institutions. Correct. Okay. How long do you think that'll take? I mean, if we roll this out, I would like to see that component. You, you, we're working on it right now, and you should be able to have all the legal documentations. I guess Mr. Well would have to work with that, but I think you could get all through all the legal stuff, you know, 30 days, 45 days, or something like that. Okay. Because it's basically, you're setting up the program for the bank to work with you on the HERO program that's already established by the state. Gotcha. And it's already funded by the federal government. Gotcha. So Thank you. You through? Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Um, Mr. Hubbard, I just have one more one question for you. Go. Anybody else is done? Um, <laughs> with the new law, uh, I think it took. A, I think it's gone into effect finally this year. With the old uh, uh, coolants and the AC units in the home. It, 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 didn't it go into effect now that when your outside AC unit, for example, goes bad, when it has to be replaced, they're having to go to the new stuff, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. And when you have to do a total replacement, don't you have to not affect your, your heating unit and a lot more than just the outside unit? Did they call for a total replacement? Typically it does. And people are going to be shocked or, and probably are shocked when they find that out now? Right. But the thing is, and that's why this is an important. This is a very good time to... Because now you say you go to those homeowners and say, "Look, you're going to have to replace your whole thing. It's going to cost you ten thousand dollars right around Christmas time. Come on, man. You know, and here's forty five hundred dollars. That's going to offset that amount of money." Which that's right. Well, that's that, yeah. I don't think people are aware of that. If you have an old <coughs> unit, your cooling is, right. is Freon, and it goes out. You got to replace your heat exchanger and everything too. <laughs> to, you know, and you can't get the other stuff anymore. You can't buy the old units anymore. Correct. Correct. And that's the whole idea is that if you're going to replace your air conditioner anyway, why not get the money? Exactly. Well, very good. I appreciate one, you coming. Thank you. Make, uh, yes, the houses doesn't have to be a certain square footage, though, right? I'm sorry, homes. No. Homes doesn't have to be a certain square footage. Oh, no, ma'am. Okay. No, no. It can be 400 square foot. They can be, they can be 10,000 square feet. It doesn't, okay. it doesn't matter. Just not above 10,000. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, Appreciate it. Do you have anything else? Okay. Yeah, Commissioners, let's got a couple of announcements. Uh, this Thursday, we'll have the Veterans Day program at 3 o'clock here in the, sanction, in, in the uh, chamber. Gotcha. Thursday, Thursday. The Veterans Day program is going to be put on by the employee council at 3 o'clock Thursday. Can we get an email on that, Kyle? How we, this Thursday? Yes, sir. This Thursday, 3 o'clock. 30 minutes before the regular meeting. It only takes about 30 minutes to do the program. Okay. Uh, do we have a committee meeting we schedule? Do we do it at 2.30. At 2.30, and what's that meeting? What committee meeting it's is that? It's uh, personnel policy. Yeah. Personnel policy. That shouldn't take a half hour. We have one item on the other agenda. Two. Two. Okay. Fine. Okay. Very good. Okay. The other item is we have plenty of these signs. If you'd like to have a few of them, please, in support of Amendment 2. Yeah. Well, oh, that's timely. Really, yeah, really? Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow, really. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow is the day. <laughs> so, uh, on the ball. Yeah, so we'd be putting those out in such easy locations tonight. It's funny, yeah. I hadn't seen David hold up anything that didn't say vote for Cox on it lately. <laughs> I don't hear one. All right. Not really. <laughs> okay, is that it? Yes, sir. I can close my All mind. right, thank you. Now we can rock and roll. Communication reports, Commissioner Lynch. Commissioner Lynch. Hey. Well, I had I had two things under the admin report. One, I wanted to thank Randy on the um, uh, Southern Prairie View game, uh, the work that he did on that. Thank you, Randy. You're welcome. And also, I had an occasion to, to go out to the fair 
and I saw the little puppies and the kittens out there and uh, so far I understand there have been over 30 adoptions I believe. Um, the first day was really kind of phenomenal. The first day they, how many did they do? Yep. Seven. Yeah, uh, the first day of the fair. So it's, it's gone extremely uh, successful and um, uh, the couple of days that I was there, the, you know, people were all around and and, uh, and that type thing. So really good program. Mm -hmm. Folks are doing a really good job uh, working with the public there. So I just wanted to bring it to you. Did you go to the barn, check out the mares and nags? No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Two-legged creatures after that. After the barn. <laughs> okay. Uh, I just wanted to give a quick report on the retreat that Lindor and I attended uh, with the large urban county caucus. Um, some of the issues that we're continuing to work on you know, as we're seeing a lot of things coming down from the federal uh, government. One is the uh, Sustainable Communities Initiative, similar to what uh, Bruce talked about, and that is a program that's looking to integrate housing, transportation, energy, and environmental planning to support sustainable development. Uh, the focus there for the Large Urban County Caucus is for that money to, to be eligible directly to parishes and counties as opposed to going through the state and also to have a 15 percent mandatory set aside for rural uh, parishes and counties. Um, the other is a repeal of the 3 percent withholding tax on county purchases. Erica's not here, but beginning in 2012, the federal government, anybody that's uh, that we have a contract with for goods and services, we have to automatic re automatically withhold the 3% uh, federal tax beginning in 2012. Well, there's a coalition now that's trying to get that repealed, uh, including the U.S. Chamber, the uh, Association of General Contractors, Architects, Engineers, because uh, they don't think it's fair to have that money uh, withheld on the front end. and. Uh, because the feds are saying a lot of them aren't reporting it or, or not paying it. Uh, but the burden is being put on county governments to collect it. And they uh, feel strongly that it's an unfunded mandate and, and want to try to repeal that. Uh, the other is the reauthorization of the safety loop, uh, which deals with highways and bridges and transit projects. Of course, this is a critical piece of legislation for I-49. Continue to work on that. Um, Something that's, I guess, near and dear that Lindor has been talking about, I think, ever since uh, we've been here, is how do we access the CD CDBG funds? Uh, of course, the city uses all of the our numbers, population. our population numbers, but yet uh, we get none of the funds for CDBG. And I believe the lady that Sam brought uh, during his uh, conference from Dallas I, I'm not, I can't get, I can't think of her name right now. Frances Smith. Frances Smith, but she was very specific in, in uh, addressing how we could access those funds and, and a plan to do that. And I think it's something that we should uh, definitely follow up on. The last thing is the um, uh, Healthy Foods Financing initi Initiative, which may help us with the Fuller Center Project which is an initiative that will bring grocery stores and other healthy food retailers to underserved <coughs> urban and rural communities across uh, America. They're making $400 million available, uh, and county governments will be able to, as county governments as well as nonprofits, uh, CDFIs, uh, and other businesses will be able to apply for financial and technical assistance that will uh, fund projects ranging from the construction or expansion of a grocery store. So uh, that's something I think we need to follow up on as well. On the um, Green Economy uh, Task Force, I think a couple of weeks ago I wasn't here, but I had asked that this particular brochure be, did you all get this? My absence. Sustainable Strategies from NACO. Okay, well good. Um, the Green Economy Task Force, uh, I guess a, few, a couple of months ago, I turned that information over to Marion Marks, who's one of the co-sponsors of the uh, Green Expo, and uh, he assembled a group of folks from private industry, academia, uh, nonprofit, Shreveport Green is at the table, uh, architects, engineers, 
folks from the oil and gas industry um, to, to uh, inquire if they were interested in participating in an initiative that would focus on uh, job growth and generation <coughs> around the green economy. And so uh, they've had a couple of meetings uh, using NACO, uh, the background of their materials and outlines to kind of form it and look at what I call catalyzing uh, some type of implementation process. And so uh, in a couple of weeks, I want to ask those folks that have had these couple of meetings to come before us uh, to, for consideration of forming actually, I guess, uh, endorsing uh, this Green Economy Task Force as uh, one of the first initiatives and, and, and let those folks go off and develop those best practices and look at some of these areas, work with Bruce, and uh, come back with some recommendations that this body can adopt, whether that's policy, uh, programs that will uh, promote green uh, development in Cattle Parish. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Branch. Um, Mr. Epperson? I'd uh, like to have a tour of the printer building for the space, the okay. facilities and space utilization committee meeting for Monday, November the 8th at 3.30 p.m. if I could, if I could get Mr. Lucky to set that up. At 3.30, Mr. Epperson? Yes, sir. Okay. Monday, uh, November the 8th. And also, I'd like to call a facility and space utilization committee meeting for Monday, November the 15th, immediately following the work session. And if any of the committee members or any commissions, commissions that could get down and uh, tour the facility prior to that, that'll, that'll be fine. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Commissioner. Anybody have any old business? All right, we'll move on to new business. <coughs> Sunny Place P10, North Ferry Road, LLC applicant. Request to rezone property located at the end of St. Charles. Get a motion moved to Thursday. No, no, Thursday. Moved by Commissioner Baker. Seconded by Commissioner Epperson. Any discussion on the motion? Vote, please. Mm. Passes. Next item. Resolution number 64, providing for the opening of the bids. Proceed for the purchase of $6 million limited tax revenue bonds. Moved by Commissioner Dominic. Okay. Seconded by Commissioner Baker. Any discussion on the motion? Uh, I'd like to um, amend the motion to include moving resolution six, 64 and through 66, I'm sorry, through 68 to Thursday's agenda. We have an agreement to move resolution 64 through 68. It's been seconded by Commissioner Baker. Any discussion on that motion? Please vote. That include uh, resolution number 67. Mm -hmm. Okay, that one needs to be pulled from uh, the agenda. Okay, so I'm sorry, 64, 65, 66, and 68. All right. So yeah. please. Mr. Cox. Thank you. That passes. Resolution 68 is pulled. We'll pull that from the seven. agenda. Yes, seven. Seven. 67. 67. All right, 67 is pulled. Miss Lynch. All right. We get through 68. Okay. Next, uh, we have the appointment of Mr. Charles Reynolds to Sir. the Black Bayou Watershed Commission. To be Thursday. Meet Sir. immediate. Moved by Commissioner Dominic, seconded by Commissioner Epperson. Any discussion on that motion? Please vote. Do we have something, Commissioner Smith? Okay, that passes. Next item on uh, the agenda. Okay, we have our end of the year board confirmation. I guess that's informational. Yes, sir, that's informational. Uh, confirmation will be used to send it not. Okay, before we go any further, I noticed one thing, and I know it's hard to get people to serve on some of these boards and all, but it looks like every every appointment or reappointment is an incumbent. Um, I would uh, wonder if, you know, if there's some way we can get information out in the community that, you know, these things have come open and maybe other people would like to serve. Uh, some of these board members may be tired. Uh, I know that's particularly hard on the uh, fire districts and the water districts, but uh, some of these other appointments have been hanging around for years, and uh, we just kind of rubber stamp it every year and, and get no notice. What I would like is, uh, if you can have provided by Thursday, I'd like to know the length of service on these individuals, please. 
Thank you, Todd. Mm. All right. Next item, we have a consent agenda. And that's it. We're adjourned. We're adjourned. Thank you, Dad. I'm going to play with Jimmy and then.